Hi, uh, thank you for joining in this uh, study of Isaiah, chapter 35 is where we'll be, and we're going to look at verses 8, 9, and 10, and uh, we'll see in, in these uh, particular verses much symbolism of those who are redeemed in Christ, and uh, our road that uh, leads us to that final destination that we spend eternity with Christ in the Father. And so, I'll pick up here in Isaiah 35, verse 8. He says, And a highway shall be there, and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. And the unclean shall not be there, but these, the wayfaring man, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any other ravenous beast shall be found thereon. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall re return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall away and uh, so it's hard to uh, hard to read those verses without breaking out into the song of therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion uh, what, a, what a great uh, what a great course we uh, step back to verse 8 again we talk about a highway in a way um, uh, immediately, when you know you you look at that, you're you're drawn to uh, an understanding of in the New Testament, of course, and symbolism of Christ being the way. And of course, that's even what it was called uh, in the Book of Acts. Uh, those who were in Christ were those that were in the way. And I'm not sure exactly where all that stemmed from, but I know that uh, partially it could come from. When uh, Jesus was speaking to his disciples in John chapter 14, and he was about to, uh, you know, suffer the death of the cross, he was telling them, he said, "Look, I'll go and prepare a place for you." And he says, "And if I do, uh, then I will come and, uh, uh, you know, come again for you, that you may be where I am also." And he said, "You you know the place, and you know the way." And Thomas, uh, a bit confused, said, "Lord." How can we know, uh, you know, how to get there? We don't even know where you're going. So, uh, you know, how can we know how to get there? And, and Jesus says, listen, I am the way. I am the truth, the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. And, of course, um, those, those are words that uh, we understand that there is no other way. There is no other uh, path. There aren't multiple paths. Um, to get to Christ. Christ is that highway. And I know that when uh, I traveled recently that, um, you know, instead of getting the Rand McNally map out, that what we use today is a, uh, you know, is GPS. And with GPS, of course, uh, you know that um, it, it might come up with multiple paths and, uh, you know, to get to a destination. And it might come up, you know, different times and everything and and though the world might view this as as uh, a way that you know or even symbolism of, of how to uh, you know arrive in uh, at the end of time with God if, if they are believers of, of God in some way um, that you know it's it's an error to believe that there is any other uh, way to the Father through God the Father the creator of heaven and earth the Holy One he is the Holy One of Israel uh, there is no other way but through His Son, Jesus Christ. And and uh, it says the unrighteous will not be there. Or uh, actually it says the unclean, meaning the unrighteous. But it's those that, that the unrighteous are any, any person who has not obeyed the gospel or has not believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's a requirement. Uh, you know, there's there's not going to be, you know, God's not going to wink at, wink at sin and say, oh, well, there's another way. He, he's going to He's going to uh, let us know that, that it's only through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's that's the path that He's made that. 
So um, in this in this case, he said the highway shall be there in the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, and the unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the wayfaring man, uh, though full, shall not err uh, therein, or shall not go astray. Okay, he said those though though fools, the wayfaring man. And I you know, I see that as Christians is although that we we possess no righteousness or holiness within ourselves and uh actually, you know, full of of um you know unrighteousness and um uh, you know wretchedness that uh we are on that path sh um solely because of the righteousness of Christ, Christ Jesus. And that's the good news, that's the gospel, is that although that we're foolish and without hope, that through Christ and Him crucified, that we are on the path that leads to God, the Holy One uh, of, of Israel, as He's called. And it goes on to say the lion and the beast, the devouring beast, uh, will not be there, the ravenous beast. Those being symbolism, I think, of, of the devil. Uh, you know, the scripture tells us that the devil uh, uh, roars and, and goes about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, and <clears throat> we, we understand that, you know, of course, that's the enemy who, who wants to uh, destroy God's people, who wants to discourage us, who wants to bring about our destruction. But those, those enemies will be uh, destroyed. Those enemies are destroyed by... Uh, the victory in Jesus Christ, and so they're they're not going to be present at that place. Now, you know we deal with those we deal with the enemy today, and that uh, you know he does try to uh, bring about our demise and our destruction. But though Christ seated at the right hand of God, ever makes intercession for his saints, and he said that no man shall pluck them. You know what? What shall we say? These things, but no man shall pluck them from um, from the hand of God. And so we are we are the uh, the redeemed of the Lord. And he says the ransom of the Lord shall return and come with a song, or, or as the song says, come with singing and uh, joy upon their heads. Boy, I tell you what, uh, you think about singing. Boy, we're going to be singing the song of the redeemed. The song that Christ has redeemed us, that, that we are joint heirs with Christ, that we have been redeemed from, from the sin and the sickness of this old body and all that goes with that, all of the sorrow and all of the pain and, and all of the, the burdens that we now carry. And, and let me tell you that every one of us carry burdens. Every one of us carry, uh, you know, are heavy laden with those things, but... But, you know, we cast our sin upon Christ, and uh, we come unto Zion. With Zion, you know, we talk about Zion. Um, Isaiah says this, and of course Peter writes it too over in, in 1 Peter, uh, I believe it's chapter 1, uh, or, verse, uh, or chapter 2, he says, Behold, I lay in Zion, I lay in Zion a sure foundation, a stone, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and he that believeth shall not make haste. And so we know that the city of God is built upon Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone in all of the apostles and, and prophets. And so we know that it's it's built upon Christ. And, and you see how all of this, all, all of this that talks about this, although the historical... A meaning in, in Isaiah is is different. The symbolism is all pointing to one person, and that being Christ. And that's what the scriptures is about. Is it everything? All of the scripture is is really focused upon one thing, and that's redemption. That God's redemption through Jesus Christ. Uh, that we're going to have everlasting joy and gladness. And it says, sorrow and sighing or mourning shall flee away. There'll be no place for that. We're not going to have a remembrance. We're, you know, we're not going to have a remembrance of, of, of the terrible things that, that many people have passed through and, and everything that we've been through that, that now brings sorrow or, or, you know, brings repentance or, 
you know, that, that makes us unhappy, that, that brings about frustration in our lives, or fear, all of those emotions, all of those things which have a grip on us today because of this body of flesh, uh, they'll be no longer. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. So, uh, words cannot describe the thoughts and ways of man cannot understand the, the glory which we shall have with Christ. And, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's unthinkable because we, we haven't ever, you know, we've not done anything that we deserve to have that, but because of God's gracious love and goodness, His holiness and His mercies, we can share those in Christ Jesus. Listen, I hope that you're encouraged, and I hope that you that you can look to these things and know that, in fact, we are in the way, that we are in the righteousness of Christ, and that we are being fully protected, and that we persevere, that we persevere by the power of Christ, so that we arrive at that city, that holy city of God, to be with Him forevermore, in Christ's name. All right. Pray that your day and your week goes well and that you're encouraged by the power of the Spirit living in you and that God does mighty things through your life. Be blessed, be safe in Christ's name.